guys, what's going on? It's Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. Today's gonna be a good episode, guys. Thank you for joining me. Today we are joined by Anaban, aka Nova Samuel, in first place by 52 trophies, guys. Really insane trophy lead here on the global leaderboard, especially this late into the season. Just incredible job here. And you can see, no, he's not actually showing the deck that he's using. This is the deck that he is using. It's kind of Pompeo-esque, meaning that it's a balloon deck without of course the lava hound which is traditionally seen with the balloon we have the op combo of the balloon and lumberjack and the OB combo of the Ice Wiz and the NATO. And then we have a card that we don't see that much in the meta anymore. It's a Valkyrie. She actually does a really good job against Swarm Troops, against Royal Hogs, against a lot of the popular uh, cards in the meta. And she has a pretty nice synergy with the Freeze, especially if you kind of bust that out as a surprise for the opponent. They drop that three Muskies, or they're coming down the lane with Royal Hogs and Magic Archer and, and Royal Ghost. You freeze everything up, you drop that uh, Valkyrie, especially in double Elixir time, and it can be incredibly valuable. Valuable. Now, guys, unfortunately, because he is so high in trophies, the one downside to that for us is we can't do live ladder matches. So since I polled you guys and asked, this will be, I think, only the, the second uh, non-live video, non-live match video that I've done the last month. So hopefully you guys can tolerate that. But on the plus side, we'll actually have an opportunity to break down some of the difficult matchups and some really intense matchups because we'll have the luxury of picking and choosing which replays that we show today. But I do want to give you a little taste of live, so I want to go ahead and hop into a live match using the deck myself to start out this video. So let's go ahead and see what we can do here against L and D. ASAP. So we'll give him the uh, good luck, and I have, look at this, I have the uh, all five of the thumbs ups. I can hit him with all five. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> in quick succession. All right, so we're going to play the Mega Minion, which is a little bit of a risky move. I do have my two spells and my Ice Wiz in my fifth card. The reason I say it's a risky move is because, and I don't have my Lumberjack, unfortunately. I'm just going to Zap Cycle here. I really don't have an obvious play. The thing, just be careful in this deck, guys, with your Mega Minion, like, like I just cycled in the early on there, because you only really have Mega Minion, and no big spells, right, except for Freeze. But you only really have Mega Minion and Ice Wiz for your air targeting in this deck. So, I'm just going to go a little push here. See if he uses an air defense. Yeah, he doesn't use an air defense, but check that out, guys. He's using a lot of Elixir here. So, I'm going to go ahead and go in with my Balloon and my Lumberjack here. And let's see what we can do. We'll have enough for Freeze, but we're not going to... I don't think we'll... I'm going to Zap. Hope I can get to the tower. No! That was a bad Zap on my part, but hey, whatever. Uh, we do get the death damage at least, so that was good. Uh, so he knows kind of what we have. He, we haven't shown him the freeze yet, and freeze is generally going to be one of those cards, as you guys know. You're going to be musing mainly in double elixir time, unless you're provided an excellent opportunity. For example, against those archers, had I had the elixir, I might have gone with the freeze. I'm playing this guy for, for expo, but he hasn't shown me it yet. So I'm just going to kind of cycle in the meantime. I'm not super scared. Oh, there's the expo. Okay. So obviously I'm not super scared of his, uh, of having to save my air counters anymore. He does give me kind of a lane here to go down with the, the expo in that placement. So we're just going to keep cycling in the back here. Again, we don't really have any great, uh, answers to cards like archers. So we're just going to keep zap cycling. I kind of want him to drop that expo. That way I can, uh... The next expo, that way I can just drop the balloon on it. And we'll see what he does here. He's going to get a connection, but it will be a brief one. That Valkyrie was probably a misplay on my part, guys. Not probably, it was a misplay on my part. But maybe we can hit him with a little one-two punch here. He does have Tesla in cycle. I was hoping that Valkyrie would take out all of those uh, cards. Let's see if we can get that Lumberjack to the tower. We don't. Another kind of unfortunate sequence there. So what we can do here, guys, is just Valkyrie right now. And we can freeze as soon as he drops a troop here. So he drops a troop. We're going to freeze defensively. And he has Fireball in hand. Let's see if he uses it, guys. Obviously need to keep my ground troop alive. Or at least cycle to another one. So we had to use a lot of Elixir defending there. Not necessarily what we wanted. So this time we're going to go ahead and Lumberjack and Balloon again. He drops a lot of elixir there. He will get a temporary lockdown, but we have a rage balloon, so that's good. And there it is. Might expo again here. Let's see what he does. We're going to Mega Minion the right. 
And we're going to try to pull off another Lumberjack and uh, a Lumberjack Balloon Push in the opposite lane. So I'm going to freeze again here, guys. I'm actually going to pull these archers away because I don't think I can handle them right now in that lane. And then we will Lumberjack Balloon again. He does have that Tesla in cycle. So let's just kind of be aware of that. We're going to Ice Whiz. And then we're going to definitely freeze. This is going to be like our big push here, guys. So let's see if we can pull it off. The balloon gets to the tower. The balloon is frozen. I'm going to go ahead and NATO these away. He's forced a fireball, which is good. Uh, going to drop that. Okay, sweet. We get it. Wow, man. That was really, really close at the end there. And I didn't really play that necessarily incredibly well. But we kind of, you know, that final push. And this is one of those decks, right? You can win in one push like that. So it came down to it there, maybe a little bit of an overcommitment, but again, when you go in and, you know, even if you're losing the match, like we were there, obviously, throughout most of the match, even if he gets a couple expo locks on my tower, even if I take a lot of tower damage, I'm able to come back with one big, powerful push. That was actually pretty good. Uh, this is a deck that, let me just throw this out there, guys. This is a deck that you're going to want to definitely play for a bit. It, it's, it's a higher skill cap deck, but it doesn't mean it's impossible. You just have to understand the synergy again making sure that you're you're rarely going to be sending in a balloon when you don't have that lumberjack rage because the rage uh the rage and the balloon synergy is really important in this deck offensively so let's go ahead and watch the replay against royal here who in many's opinion including my own is the best player in the world right now he is from romania but he actually plays in crl north america known as one of the best golem players if not the best golem player in the entire world he was a student of floppy for a while and then it's kind of one of those things where maybe the student even got better than the master yeah, that's up for argument but both players inevitably are going to be two of the names that you'd mention when you talk about the best beatdown players in the game right now so uh samo's on the top of your screen which kind of sucks but in this match is kind of cool because you get to watch it from the vantage point of Royal here. So let's see how he handles this uh, this matchup. And right off the bat here, Samuel's going to go in with the balloon, and he goes pretty aggressive with that balloon again, trying to take advantage of the rage that we talked about. Oftentimes, when that lumberjack dies, even if you delay a second or two, Samuel's going to go ahead, or I keep calling him Samuel. Uh, Anaban's going to want to go ahead and attack and try to eat up that rage ability. Oftentimes, even with uh, as long as you have four elixir, excuse me, in hand, or two elixir for zap or freeze, oftentimes with that rage, you can get by a bunch of hard counter type defensive uh, uh, stands. So here we go again, guys. Now look at this push. It's the first golem push that we had to deal with here in the match. And look at how easily Samuel's going to handle this here. He, uh, he goes ahead and he activates King Tower with the tornado there, and I believe... He is going to go ahead and freeze. He does. So he's going to use freeze on defense against heavy beatdown matchups. That's something that you guys are definitely going to want to take away from this video. Heavy beatdown, you might have to use freeze against the support troops. And this is a beautiful way of kind of pulling off that combo. You NATO the golem to the tower, and then you freeze in Valkyrie or freeze and uh, Ice Whiz or something against the support troops to take them out. Of course, freeze, we've talked about this before here, guys. Freeze is one of those spells that's probably going to get reworked in December. Uh, it's it's either going to get a rework or a nerf. And Rumham's already came out and said that. That's not my opinion. That's that's already out there so i i feel like it's it's definitely i wouldn't call it like incredibly op but it can be one of those the only cards in the game in my opinion i've mentioned this in other videos as the freeze does connect there for another hit on that balloon so this is kind of a do or die push here for royal guys but back to my freeze point freeze is one of those cards that even if you're the the far worse player you know the the opponent is far superior in skill level to you you can still win a match. You know, that guy, that Expo player was probably way better than I am, right? But but we still won the match thanks to the cheesy freeze. So I think that's the element that a lot of people don't like about the freeze, especially on ladder where you can level it above tourney level standard. So Royal does get the golem to the tower here, and he's eating up some rage ability of his own. But check this out. He, he's able to, we're able to really mitigate the damage thanks to the activated king tower in a lot of ways, right? Really helping us kind of uh, eat through that golem as we handled all the support troops. And then finally, when the golem dies, 
we go ahead and just freeze everything up again and we drop our Valkyrie. And that's what I talked about at the beginning of this video, guys, that the freeze Valkyrie combo is, is definitely underrated, especially against a big push like this, against the support troops, no matter what they are, it's going to be a really, really lethal and, and, and strong combo. Now, we just used freeze, but we're able to cycle back to it here. So here it goes. It's going to be the Lumberjack again, seen with the balloon at the bridge there. So he goes in. We have double tombstone set up, but he's able to, with perfect placement, uh, avoid those double tombstones, but even with the Rage and the NATO, we're able to get the Balloon close enough for the death damage to make contact on that left tower, taking it down to 167. Now remember, no big spell in this deck, so this match is far from over. We have to stop this push again. Another Golem push coming in here. We do have Balloon in hand, and we have Freeze in hand. Now, the thing is, is Royal has Tombstone and NATO in hand as well. So he can he can actually pull this balloon to the opposite lane if he wants to. He opts to pull it up more, though, and that's going to lead the death damage to sealing the deal here for Anaban, picking up the W against an, another incredible, incredible Golden player. Now, maybe in hindsight, Royal might have been able to. Maybe I'm missing something, though, because he's like a million times better than I am, right? But maybe in hindsight, Royal could have put that Tombstone a little bit higher, maybe a little bit more to the right, and then Pull, pulled that balloon to the opposite lane. I don't know. Either way, he probably could have full, pulled off a freeze uh, and taken down the opposite lane tower. So who knows? Either way, it was a really nice match. And I want to go ahead and show you this match against Red Bull, guys. And you know Red Bull. He's always at the top of ladder. This guy is a machine. And he is playing the ever-so-popular Royal Giant deck. Uh, I'm not sure if he's playing the one with the Double Dragon with the Inferno Dragon or Double Dragon with the Electro Dragon. I'm actually seeing both versions go around. Both versions usually have the Baby Dragon. Uh, but this one looks to be the Electro, the Inferno, excuse me, Dragon version. So Samuel, in the beginning, you can see another you know, none of the starting hands, at least in my experience, none of the starting hands with this deck look that good, right? I mean, you, you, like, what play do you want to make here? Usually it's going to be a more of a reactive deck. Again, even if you cycle the Mega Minion or the Ice Wizard at the beginning of a match, you could be in trouble because those are the only two cards you have to answer air, you know? So just be careful with starting plays in this deck, guys. So here we go. He's going to set up with a, a Furnace there. This is going to be a, a really good match here, guys. But the match that I show you after this one going to be even better, so definitely stay tuned for both. Uh, so here we go, Royal Giant in back of the King Tower for Red Bull, and Red Bull's a guy who I've never been able to get in contact with. He's always at the top of ladder. I don't know who's on the account. I think it's probably just a private owner. I'm not sure, but either way, you guys can see that the Samuel does connect, and Red Bull opts to not defend at all, so we had kind of a predictive freeze go down, maybe predicting, I don't know, Fire Spirits, uh, Furnace, uh, Inferno Dragon, Baby Dragon, whatever, but Red Bull's going to opt to try to tower trade here, so so he comes in hot with a double dragon, royal uh, giant, and we're able to respond just using a... And look at this NATO, guys, coming up. Look at this NATO. This is why I like replays. I can kind of scout this these plays out. That was a beautiful NATO there. The tower was already taking down the Inferno Dragon. He pulls that baby dragon to the opposite tower, and then he's able to, to uh, take care of that Barbarian using the left tower. So that was a really good job in uh, dealing with a push that could have been way worse, that scenario, right? Uh, a Royal Giant Double Dragon coming in at you after you wasted a freeze for really no reason on that right tower. I think you probably would have had the tower either way. Uh, that's definitely a, a tough, a tricky defense. Either way, Red Bull, as you guys can see, see there does get that left tower down as we approach double elixir time and this is where things get really interesting here in this match you're gonna see a really cool uh element to this deck how to play a match when you have one tower down because things shift because obviously you can use that lumberjack you can use that valkyrie in the center in the pocket you can also obviously send that balloon in uh either in the pocket or uh of course down the lane now what differentiates those situations? When should you be playing the balloon and the lumberjack in the pocket versus in the lane? It's pretty obvious, guys. If your opponent has a defensive building such as the Furnace or Tornado, one of those uh, two types of cards, Tornado or a defensive building in hand, then you don't want to play your balloon lumberjack in the pocket because they can just NATO or, or lure it to the opposite side to the King Tower, uh, buying a lot of time for the opponent. 
if they do have it, if they don't have it in hand, well, you can go ahead and do a quick attack like that, or if they don't have it in their deck at all. So that's kind of the two things that you want to be paying attention to, especially once you go into these one a tower down situations on both sides here. So Fireball comes down, uh, a, be a beautiful freeze there, but the Baby Dragon is in hand. So we're just going to get the balloon death damage onto the tower, no hits. And things are pretty even here, uh, maybe about a thousand extra damage off of Red Bull's tower. And that Royal Giant is not even going to get one hit onto that right tower because we are going to be ready with the NATO and the Ice Wizard, the power again of that OP defensive combo. Uh, the, the NATO and the Ice Wiz. Every time the Royal Giant is dropped in the pocket, we, Anaban, is going to have that combo ready. Totally take care of that push. And we have the Valkyrie if we need it to if the opponent drops guards. And that's exactly what he's been doing here. So again, we don't get to the tower, guys. But we do get the death damage of that balloon. Again, taking it down to 1244. Again, the Royal Giant this time does get one swing off. We drop that Valkyrie to deal with those guards in the right lane. And now again, just really, really relying on that uh, Ice Wizard. Despite even the Inferno Dragon, we're able to clean up very, very nicely there. A really nice job defensively. And it's going to be frustrating at this point if you're Red because we can keep and now look at this beautiful again we talked about this guys the furnace was out of cycle there Ooh, almost got to the tower the fire spirits at the last second there that would have been an epic predictive freeze had he landed that on the fire spirits guys uh but either way as i was saying the furnace was out of cycle so we hit him in the pocket there so varying your gameplay is going to be important as well but we take his tower down to 849 hp and we are relentless here on the offense we are attacking the furnace is played behind the bridge in a rather un orthodox play it's definitely not what red bull's wanting to do here guys but we drop that freeze and look at that freeze are you kidding me we don't get to the tower but the valkyrie does and the death damage is going to take that tower down man that was a pretty epic match to watch there so let's go ahead and watch one more guys and i promised you a pretty epic match and this is going to be it who is this guy i don't know who it is uh, on this account, but he's a member of Illuminati and he's 21st in the world and this is the deck that he's going to be playing and again, you can already see the potential of the Valkyrie against a deck like this is really epic. We could freeze up a lot of value, drop that Valkyrie, and we're going to see that one or two times inside of this match. So let's go ahead and spectate it. Again, unfortunately, Samuel at the top of your screen, but it's okay. It will be worth it, guys, I promise. So we're going to go in with the, uh, well, we're not going to go in with anything. We don't know. But we're going to watch this from, again, the vantage point of the opponent here. He's going to start out by cycling the Royal Ghost behind his tower. And immediately we go in with the balloon and this is an interesting play if you do have balloon or i should say if anaban does have balloon in his starting hand and the opponent makes a three plus elixir investment behind the king tower to start out i did notice that he will go in opposite lane with the balloon just to see what the opponent has for counters and now we've already identified crap they have hunter and they have tombstone how are we ever going to get through right Tombstone, obviously, really good against Balloon. They also have Magic Archer to support that as well. But Hunter, really, like, the Tier 1, the best counter to Balloon if you put him at point-blank range. So, early off here, the opponent has the damage advantage to both of our towers, kind of split about 1,000 HP off of both of the towers. So, definitely, again, not the start the that uh, I always go to call him Samuel, that Anaban wanted here early off in this match. So, we're going to respond to that Royal Ghost using an Ice Wizard along with the Valkyrie and then we drop the Lumberjack as well so we're dropping a lot of cards here but we're not going in with the balloon every single time oftentimes it's good to bait out the opponent's counter by dropping and kind of fa like faking that we're going to go in with the balloon there and we got the hunter out of the opponent's hand however it came at the cost of another I don't know thousand damage or so 800 600 damage to our to our right tower so definitely kind of a precarious situation as we enter in almost double elixir time in about 15 seconds here in this match guys and again we're going to respond to that royal ghost we're going to take care of him ice wizard is going to get some more value taking care of those bats as well and now at this point we're entering double elixir time we have not used our freeze we've only used that same one balloon that first balloon of the match here so you're seeing that once we figured out what we're going against here obviously anaban in his head thought to himself 
Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just take things slow, wait till double elixir time, and try to pick my spots. Now, here we go. This is the second balloon play of the match, and we're going in behind that Valkyrie. Uh, the, the, uh, keep in mind that the tower is right now targeting onto the balloon, but we actually get there, and there it is. The freeze comes down, and look at that, just in one push, kind of like our live match there, guys. We take some damage, we take some damage, we take some damage. Finally, we're able to get to the tower there in a nice freeze, pull that off, and take the tower down. Now, in this situation, we did tower trade with the opponent, so we're going into another uh Overtime, it was looking like an overtime situation with about 20 seconds left here in this match. We're going to reload. Reloading with your defensive cards as you saw me do in my live, ma live match too, guys. When you're not sure exactly what to do, just go ahead and uh, let the match kind of come to you here and just cycle your defensive cards. This time we go opposite lane there with a the balloon onto the King Tower and we do make contact again, trying to eat up that rage. And we take that King Tower all the way down to 2,112 damage, guys. But look at this, guys. This is what I'm talking about. I'm going to pause really quickly here because this is the, the, the point that I've been illustrating this entire uh, video about the Valkyrie's uh, kind of synergy with the Freeze in this deck. And look at this, man. It's a Magic Archer. What else does he have there? He has two Magic Archers and the Royal Hogs. That's going to be a nice Valkyrie value there. And check that out, man. We totally dispose of that monster push by the opponent here as we're about 15 seconds into Sudden Death Overtime. So again, going in with the Valkyrie there, taking care of that Tombstone. We do Zap as well. We get that Valkyrie to the tower for at least one hit. We're at a damage uh, deficit here. And this time, we're going to switch things up. We did have Freeze in hand, but we didn't have to use it because we had NATO and Lumberjack, two incredibly strong defensive cards along with the Ice Wizard there. So it Really nice defensive synergy there, able to avoid all tower damage without having to use our freeze. That saves us up to use our freeze on offense here, and the Lumberjack getting all kinds of value, and then the Mega Minion stays alive. Mega Minion is going to get one, make it two shots on that tower, and all of a sudden, things are basically very close to tied up as far as damage goes in this match here. And you can see that even though we had damage down to the King Tower on that Balloon Rage push, or the Balloon Lumberjack push early on in Sudden Death, guys, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're, we're kind of constricted to only going for the King Tower. This is a good counter push deck, especially if you can get that value on the counter push with the surviving Lumberjack, surviving Valkyrie, surviving Ice Wizard. So again here, guys, trying to get that Magic Archer sneaky positioning is the opponent here, but not really making it work. Now we have the Royal Hogs coming in and hot. Zap's going to go down, take care of those bats, and buy a little bit more time for the Valkyrie to do her thing against those Royal Hogs. And then we have a surviving Valkyrie. So is this the push? I don't think this is actually the push that he wins on, guys. So it's going to be a Valkyrie. We come in with a Mega Minion. We have Balloon in hand. We also have Freeze in hand but not enough elixir to use them both right now. So you can tell that Anaban would ra much rather use that Lumberjack and try to get that Rage down, and he knows he has a minute plus left to play with in this match. So this is where things get really intense. We have, again, the pigs onto the tower, but again, having that restraint not to use the freeze and this is going to be a big push here we have the lumberjack in the pocket that's going to take care of that magic archer the tombstone is down but the freeze comes down an epic freeze bats are down but it's not going to be enough boom that oh man that was a very very clutch second hit there with that balloon and anaban letting him know about it with a little bm at the end of the match guys and that is the story of how anaban got to seven thousand trophies using this deck man really 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 epic matches there and again guys I'm just gonna give you one more reminder it's it's a deck that you have to play for a little bit to get the hang of so don't get frustrated after one or two losses and if you're having problem with a specific card don't be afraid to go ahead and sub in a better counter to that in this deck so guys huge shout out to Anaban again remember to subscribe to him on YouTube if you want to see his gameplay he's gonna be active there uploading again along with his player stats and profile thanks to statsreal.com Com. And huge, huge shout out to Bren Chong, my YouTube partner. Check out his information as well. Guys, thanks for watching all the way till the end. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you. And as always, take care, guys.